Imagine getting a call from a client with a perplexing problem. Every day at 3 p.m., their network grinds to a halt. They've tried everything. So you step in with your secret weapon, Wireshark's Iographs. It's like having X-ray vision for your network, letting you see every spike and every dip in traffic. In this video, I'll guide you through not only reading these graphs, but using them to uncover the hidden mysteries of your network. All right, now that we know what Wireshark can do, let's actually dive in and start putting this into action. Remember that bandwidth problem that our client has about 3 p.m. every day? Let's take a look at it and investigate and figure out what's going on. The first thing we're gonna do is open up IO graphs, and to do that, we're gonna to go to statistics and IO graphs. So looking at the components of biographs, the x-axis is going to be time, and the y-axis is going to be either packets or bytes. I like to change mine to bits so we can have megabits per second, which we're all familiar with. And something else we want to do in this particular case is check the time of day checkbox, since we're looking for that issue at 3 p.m. that the client's having every day. Now that we see the traffic patterns, let's find out who's behind the data flows. Statistics conversations will give us chat totals between devices, and statistics endpoints will give us totals per device. We open up statistics and conversations, then click on the IPv4 tab and sort by bytes. Here we spot two suspects, 192.168.100.22 and 192.168.2.24, they both send about two gig worth of data, but it looks like 100.22 send a bit more. So let's check statistics endpoints in the same way to get the total per device. Aha, 192.168.100.22 sent about three gig worth of data. So is this our culprit? Maybe, but let's not jump to conclusions yet. Remember, conversations and endpoints reveal who, but not when, and IO graphs reveal when, but not who. But let's combine the two to unlock the true power of IO graphs. To do this, I quickly add two filters, one for 192.168.100.22 and another for 192.168.2.24. I rename each graph and assign distinct colors. Then I switch the Y axis to bits for consistency. After enabling both filters, I disable all packets. Immediately, patterns emerge. The 100.22 in red shows shorter bursts over a longer period of time, while the 2.24 in blue spikes around 3 p.m., stopping only because I stopped the packet capture. I grab the workstation name for those IPs and point out the red spikes to the clients. This one's from our workstation, it's called Gallifrey, I say. He looks at it and says, yeah, that's my workstation. I ran a few speed tests around 2.45 before we started our testing. I point out the blue spikes from 2.24 and I'm excited. Look at this, I say, this has to be it. The workstation name is INT01. He looks at it, no, that's the intern's workstation and he's already gone for the day. He leaves every day before 3 p.m. So that can't be it. It kind of seems like you're onto something, but I'm not convinced. I pause considering his point even so, let's take a look, because packets don't lie. As we unlock the intern's computer, the issue becomes clear. He has many hefty downloads in progress. What time does he leave again? I ask the client. Around 3 p.m., the client confirms, so I show him the evidence. It looks like he starts up these downloads every day just before heading out. The client's face hardens. All of that lost productivity, he mutters walking off. I never found out what he said to the intern, but we never got another call about slowdowns at 3 p.m. So there you have it. We've transformed from puzzled bystanders to network detectives using Wireshark's IO graphs to uncover the mystery of our 3 p.m. network slowdown. If this video helped you, hit the like button and subscribe for more insights into Wireshark, networking, and cybersecurity. Got your own network mystery? Share it in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.